welcome to Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom, and today we're actually going to do a landscape. Now, for those of you that know me, landscape's not something that I paint very often. And I'm doing this to encourage you. I'm doing something that's a little bit out of my comfort zone to encourage you to do something that's a little bit out of yours and just give it a shot. Last time on Give Your Wall Some Soul, we painted an urn. And we compared the strokes to the urn to an abstract, um, and, and an abstract to the urn, and an urn to somebody's face. And basically what you'll start to see is a thread of how all these paintings tie together. And uh, what I'm going to do is first talk about the palette. The palette that we used, the pigments that we used in the last show, are very close to what we used on the urn, even though we're doing a landscape. So I'm going to talk about those, and hopefully we get those on the screen. We've got uh, titanium white and ultramarine blue, a nice phthalo turquoise, sap green, green gold, doxazine purple, uh, perylene scarlet, and I found one, uh, this red, that's just incredibly metallic. Um, and we'll, I'm going to work that in with the gold because I was experimenting with that and I really like what I saw happening. So there's, there's just tons of new stuff that we're working on today. Basically to just get this thing sketched out, I'm going to go ahead and take purple again. Now why do I always pick purple? It's fairly neutral and I like it. It's a nice cool neutral color and it's just my good favorite sketching color. Now you can tell that I've got a slight pencil sketch down, but that's by no means the, the final drawing. So I think I'll just get it roughed in. This is a barn in Arkansas, uh, somewhere near Batesville, Arkansas. And I spent 11 months there. And when you're from California, the, uh, the train's very different. It's, it was very humid, and one of the things that the humidity causes that, that affects a landscape is in a California landscape, uh, usually you've got some really serious contrasts of darks and lights because you don't have a lot of cloud cover and you, you, you know, your shadows are there. This is more of a subtle painting. Now, for somebody like me who's not known for subtlety, this is a good challenge. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull off a subtle painting. Either way, like all the other paintings, they'll have soul. And you know, I also had some comments. I had a lot of comments from the last show. I think it was probably the most email and um, the most phone calls that I got. Um, talking about my palette, talking about Super Chicken. And uh, one person wanted to know, well, why do you call it Give Your Wall Some Soul? And basically, I think, you know, you can have, you know, you look around at the walls in your house and they could be naked, they could be boring, or you could be looking at the same old stuff for a long time. Why not put something that comes from your heart on the walls? And that's why I'd like to inspire you to get out your paints or your pencils and just try and make something. They take on a life of their own. Now, when I started uh, to sketch in this landscape, I was considering the composition. And typically, you don't really want um, a horizon right dead center. It's pretty close to dead center, so I'm pushing it. I'm going to put in these little fence posts for a reference. I'm not getting real detailed here. Yeah, and actually, if, if you are the type of person that really enjoys painting every blade of grass, that's not the type of painting that I'm going to do today. I want to try and pretty much get this down in one sitting. And what you can do if you do enjoy painting that sort of detail is after it dries, go back into it and put every, every blade in. I'm not a patient painter. I like instant gratification. OK, so I've got a nice rough sketch. Now, you, if you look at the reference photo, there's a lot that I'm editing out. And when I paint, I want to do things that are concise. So what I'm editing is it's the effect of not, not babbling. There was too much going on in the, in the reference photo for me. I'm looking at these lines. Do I like this? And what I'm going to do is, is just take bands of color in order to make this scene come alive. 
Now, uh, people have a sensibility as far as things that are easy for them to paint. You all know that I love to do people and form and things that are really three-dimensional. So it's almost like um, the difference between math and English as far as it is a totally different sensibility in painting a landscape. So instead of looking at things in a three-dimensional way, um, you're, there is more perspect uh, perspective involved. Um, it's more bands of color. It's, it's a totally different way of looking at it. So what I'm going to do is show you how I put these puzzle pieces together to create a landscape. Now the first thing I want to do is attack that sky. I'm not going to put in any of those clouds. I'm going to do just kind of a base color to get it blocked in. So I'm going to start with some titanium white, a whole bunch of it. Now a really good color to, to start for the sky, especially over there, is this thalo turquoise. I'm going to mix just a little bit in there. Now that's just a little loud and a little bright for what's actually going on. I'm going to wipe my knife with this. Yeah, that's still way too bright. Now, the way that I would tone this down is add a little bit of orange. Blue and orange are actually complementary. And uh, now what it reminds me of, instead of a sky, is more uh, the, the colors from the 50s and the fiesta wear. This is a really good lesson for something, something that occurred. Um, I could, that blue was so powerful, that turquoise, that I could keep adding white to this pile all day and still not get it light enough. So when you do that, you, it's, I'm admitting that I screwed up early on. And what I'm going to do is take half the pile, move it over, and add a bunch of white to that. And then that'll be the right consistency. Because the sky is really, really light. Yeah, that's much better. Oops. I actually put some, <laughs> I must have picked up some ultramarine blue. And um, that was not intentional, but I'm going to go with that. And I'm going to add some more white, because I sure didn't put enough of that down. We're going to be using a lot more white today than I normally do. This is not going to be about glazing. Normally when I paint, it's lots of layers of glazing. I want to try and put these down like a puzzle piece and leave it. Okay, that's a nice blue. I don't know if it's going to be the right one, but I'm going to put it down. It looks really dark on this white palette, but I think next to the other things it won't. And I could play with that all day, and we don't have all day. So I'm getting a fairly wide brush, and it's stiff, and I'm going to scrub it in in crisscross strokes. See, it looks pretty light on the, get rid of that pencil line. This is giving it some energy by not just doing a, a nice quiet stroke. This is when you start to hear the music in the paintings. This is what I mean about soul. Uh, I'm not talking Aretha here. This is more uh, George Thurgood. Now, typically, the sky is darker at the top, lighter at the bottom. So as I run out of paint, I'm going to add some white to this. I actually experienced weather in Arkansas. That's not something I ever had out here in California. Born and raised here, so 11 months out there. It was really cool. Thunder showers, tornadoes, tornadies. They call them tornadies. If you take a look at the reference photo, and you'll notice that, hey, she's not painting everything that's there. No, I'm, I'm really editing the sides. I didn't like those trees back there, especially the one on the right. Now, 
Now this was a very hot, muggy day, and there, w on days like that, there wouldn't be this much going on in the sky. Wouldn't be this much air movement unless you were getting ready to storm. Um, so it may not be <laughs> realistic to what was actually going on, but I really like the energy that's going on. So part of part of giving your wall some soul or giving your painting some soul is seeing what's there and being brave enough to do what feels good. And the worst thing that could happen, the absolute worst thing that could happen is that it comes out really bad and you throw it out. But I always plan on doing something really good, so I always use good materials, just in case. I actually expect them to come out good. When well, they're not, it's kind of frustrating. Okay, I'm adding white so that it's lighter toward the bottom. And that's really not going to show that much of a difference. So, at this stage in the game, because it's too light here, I would need to add I'm not going to be able to lighten this up while it's wet hair, so to compensate, I will add some dark up at the top. And I might just take some straight, be brave, take some straight ultramarine blue. Lately, I've been in such a warm phase, you haven't seen me even use these colors, except for when I was painting that lady. But there's always a little bit of warm right, right in the blue. Add a little bit of orange. That's going to tone it down a little bit. Maybe not enough. You'll notice that I'm just picking up a little bit of the orange. I'm not adding that much. This is actually, I call it orange. It looks orange, but it's actually called Cad Yellow Deep. These um, cadmium pigments are very strong, so just a little bit's really going to do it. All right, I'm going to take some of this blue, put it at the top. And I could spend all day, you know, on the sky, which would bore the heck out of you guys. So I'm just going to do some of this and move on. My pressure at the, as far as this, the brush strokes is stronger at the top, and it's tapering off at the bottom so that it kind of feathers and you're not looking at this straight line. And there are days when I'll paint a sky if I'm, if I'm really mellow that, that you won't see a brush stroke at all, but that's just not me today. I picked up some, I don't even know what I picked up over there, maybe some green. Um, but it's kind of like garlic, it'll just add a little spice to it. Oh, I like this. It looks like something's really going to start to happen here. And you can see faces in these clouds. Have you ever just lie down in the grass and look at the faces in the clouds? And if you haven't done it lately, give it a shot. It's inspiring. Okay, so we've got some energy moving in this sky. Um, yeah, I, th I think the thing about the painting and the soul that I want to get out of this painting is there is, is the feeling that a lot is going to happen here even though it looks like a quiet little barn. Okay, so now I need to, to throw in some trees. Now, tree, trees are, uh, faces are easier for me than trees. And um, so this is a matter of just looking at the perimeter of the trees and getting their basic shape. I'm going to use sap green. You know, I use uh, tissue to wipe my knife because it works better than paper towels. I'm going to add some red because it's a complement. That'll tone it down a little bit. And I discovered, I can't wait to get out this iridescent gold. It's, uh, it's actually scarab, iridescent scarab red. And it's uh, almost a metallic. Oh, God, that's a nice color. And when you thin it down, that's one thing. I was talking to another artist. Um, it actually works at the studio about thinning down metallic paint. When you thin down metallic paint, it gets so runny and, uh, that it loses all of its uh, properties. The, the pigment just breaks down. So um, that was a good lesson for me in, 
in uh, letting the paint be paint. Try not to make it be something that it's not. Um, but of course, I'm always pushing it. So when I found this iridescent color, I had to experiment. And I'm going to go ahead and rough in the background trees. That's way, uh, you know, as soon as I put one stroke down, it is way too dark. If it was that far back in the background, it would not be that dark. So I'm going to work some of this off my brush. The you know, basic law is that the, that the further you're away from something, the lighter it's going to be. Okay, we've got some stuff happening there. Bushes. This is my extent of bushes here. Okay. And what am I going to add to that? Now, I could add just white to that, but that would just be a real boring. <laughs> It would be too subdued. It would be a boring color. So I'm going to add a little bit of uh, Cad Yellow Deep, which is making it a little brighter. Then I can add, I'm going to add some of this sky mixture to it. That will tone it down. That's better, much better. Yeah, the atmosphere there is very, very thick. Well, I didn't clean my brush good enough, so I put down some of the same stuff that I did. I'm going to get a new brush. And uh, I'm going to pick up some lighter color to start with and then mix it in there. That's much better. I can always play with this better later. Now, leaving that dark in there and working into that dark is good because you can, you're allowed some dark at the bottom. I mean, if you look at a tree, or you look at any bushes, closer it gets to the ground, the darker and thicker it's going to be. One thing I didn't know when they, they're talking about painting a tree is that I'd, I'd paint this trunk, and then I'd start out here and paint my branches. Well, the, the, the way the tree grows, if, it, if you start from the trunk and, and put your branches out, that's a natural progression. It's going to be thicker where it meets the trunk. And, and you'll actually run out of paint at the right time. So, But I always start in the wrong place still to this day. I know better and I still start in the wrong place. OK. And I don't want an even line, because that would be boring too. I don't know what kind of trees these are back here. They had a lot of really beautiful oaks. Yeah, okay, that color's going to work. I had to play with it a little bit just to make sure. I'm also scrubbing out some of the pencil lines that I, that I put. It's easier to get them now than later. And I will go back in and add a little more detail later, I think, or I intend to. Right now, I want to cover the canvas before I start judging it. I don't want to fix something that's not broken. OK. I don't think I drew that right. That needs a little more stuff there. As far as, it, as, far as the composition, now I'm, I'm tempted to not put in this tree here. But I think that space, this shape, is a lot more interesting if I do put in something there. So. Um, it also stops it from running off the canvas. So I'm, I'm doing the de dreaded tree. Let's see. I'll start with some of the dark, darker colors. It's a little bit more forward. No, actually, it's not. Never mind. <laughs> this is actually in the background. In the reference photo, there are, some, there are some trees that are closer, and I conveniently crop them out of there. Again, this is just a nice rough roughing in. 
I'm just checking to see if I like these shapes. The barn was hugging. Just beautiful countryside out there. Okay, one of, one of the laws of painting trees that I just broke um, is that you really should leave some holes because it's not just a solid mass of something. And, um, and I forgot, <laughs> so I'm going to put in holes later. But I like that tree. That's a nice shape there. Okay. Now what else do we have? We have another row, but this is like a different color slightly. So we're going to again put dark dark at the bottom. It's a little bit closer. And now that's kind of interesting. I'm making it a little cooler. I think I need to warm it up a little bit. I can't even tell what half these things are. They might be hay bales, they might be, I don't, you know, it doesn't really matter. They're just shapes to me. Okay, I like that dark there. And what's this? A little bit lighter. There needs to be some separation there. So I'm going to lighten that up. Try to break up the straight line. My landscapes tend to be really abstract. <clears throat> they didn't start off that way. But it's just a matter of years of uh, of uh, allowing yourself to paint the way you paint rather than the way you think you should paint. And for when I first started out, I worked really, really hard at making sure that um, things were photorealistic. And uh, well, you can see I don't do that anymore. However, I know some painters that that is their sensibility and they do photorealism and it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, just incredible. Okay, that's got some nice stuff going on back there. Well, of course, you know, I haven't done any red yet, so um, the painting's not going to be happy until I throw some red in there. Uh, maybe I'll tone it down just a little bit because we're not, we're not, we're not in the final stages. I'll, I'll throw some, maybe some cad yellow deep with this. These are all basically, I'm, I'm, to make these colors harmonious, you know, we've got some wild stuff going on here, but to make them harmonious, I'm mixing them with their neighbors so that nobody looks like they're uh, from another planet. They're all harmonious. I mean, Discord, Discord is good if, if you have just little spicy accents. Unless your whole painting is that way, and that's fine too, but I'm not, I'm not going for that. This is more harmony. Okay, we'll see if this, we'll see if this orange is going to fly. Um, won't know until I put it down. And it might be just a little too green. Yeah, it needs more red. And I need some more medium. Wow, that's nice. It's not even close to the color that's there. It's more of an orange thing. But I like it.
That's happy. Okay, I'm, I don't want it to go the whole way, but maybe just little pieces. So this rhythm, you know, we talk about rain, paintings having a rhythm, and uh, we've got this long stroke here and a short one here, so I'm going to add something long, maybe over on the other side, maybe a little syncopation, a little beep, and then something over here that's longer. Okay. Now I'll throw some more green in. Nah, I'm going for the orange. <laughs> We're going for the gold. Okay, so first what I'm doing with these strokes is I'm actually just kind of scrubbing it in. Oh, that's pretty. Scrubbing it in in little places. And then what I'll do is kind of go up so that it has a, uh, I don't know if you can see that. I'll do that again. So first, we're going sideways. And I'm even going into these little fence posts because I'm going to paint over the top of them later. So just little sideways things. And then what you would do later is just go up top like this, and that creates some illusion of grass, things happening. You also don't want these long lines here. They need to be broken up. So something's got to go top over that. You know, it, it's like music. If you if everything's forte, it's just boring. Okay, that's good. Um, I could get carried away with the red. Now, even at this stage, it's starting to take shape. It's starting to look like at least you know at least some sort of landscape. Um, I'm saving the barn for last. I think right now I want to I want to block in because I could really kind of pick around with the barn. So I want to really block in the main colors. So I'll start with the. Uh, some of the green that's in here and see how far that takes me. I'm actually going to mix a little color. Again, uh, this is a little bit lighter, a little more bright. It's closer, so it, it can afford a little brightness. I'm adding some more cad yellow deep. Why do I select the colors that I do? This is pretty muddy. I select colors based on the reference, what I'm looking at, and I select colors based on, on personal preference. So it's a combination of that, those two. I don't usually give you a, or I don't ever give you a formula of squeeze out an inch of this or an inch of that and mix this color, because it changes. It's like making soup. You, you know, you throw in what you need when you need it. But the basics is what I'm showing you, and you can, you can make your own recipe from there. Okay, that's too light and that's too dull. One of the things I'm asking myself when I'm looking at the painting, is this dark or light? Is this bright or dull? And the mixture that I'm making on the palette is too dull for, for what I was going for. So I need to brighten that up. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add some of this. I haven't played with the gold green yet. Oh, that's nice. That brightened it up. Now by itself, it can be a little, uh, a little much even for me. But with this mixture, that's nice. Nice medium light color. Okay. So let's see how this nice little light color does. I've got some in here. Might be might be a little much. I'm not quite sure if we're ready for this yet, but I'm going to put it down anyway. Yeah, that was a little too much. Back to the more subdued. I'm toning it down, and I just toned it down by uh, adding some of the, the little more muted mixture. Again, I'm doing side to side first. What do we have here that's different? That's actually a shadow. I'll throw some. A little bit darker down at the bottom. A little bit cooler. Basically, what gives us separation is, is uh, the dark and light and the warm and cool. Do I want these bushes here later? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. 
That's why I'm really roughing it in. Okay, I think maybe to add some more interest. We need more of the reds. I'm going over the top lightly. I can still see where those poles go. But I don't want to have to paint around it. I, t I talk about this every time. I don't want my brush strokes to look like they uh, are running away. You know what I think is funny is that, okay, this is supposed to be Arkansas. But what's coming to me is uh, a beach, <laughs> beach foliage um, on the coast of California. Um, it, it's not, it, you know what, you just can't help where you come from. <laughs> it's just in your sensibility. So what's funny is I, I, I'm actually seeing more, uh, this is reminding more of dunes and uh, some of the stuff that grows there rather than any of the fo foliage in Arkansas. And uh, rather than try to make it fit the, the picture, my reference photo, I'm just going with it. So the longer I go, the more you're going to see that I'm deviating from the reference photo. And if you watch kids color, that's what they do. Oh, this would be fun. Hey, let's put this here. They don't worry about it. They just do it. Okay. You know, it could, it could have a lot to do with the color of the sky and, and the foliage, too, because that's, that's more of a California sky than Arkansas. Okay, so I kind of smushed that stuff together. I've got to take a look back. Yeah, that's just way different. Okay. So I need a little separation, maybe a little darker, cooler greens. We've gone from the Almond Brothers to uh, Beach Boys. Okay, I'm getting some separation there. All right, maybe it's time to, you know, I could start on the bottom, but I think I'll work my way down and, and um, throw in the barn. Maybe throw in these posts. I'm going to try that iridescent color. God, that's a nice color. Let's see. That was like up here. I'm just rough, re literally roughing them in. I don't want them to be perfect. That's a good thing because they're not coming out that way. Okay. Um, I may or may not clean them up later. Now, when I look at the barn, you've got, you know, the light where the light's hitting it is basically on the top. Sun, the sun is a light source. Um, in California, the only time it would be like this would be during midday, um, midday or an overcast day where you're not getting all these shadows. So I'm going to fake it and pretend like it's a little bit later in the day. And uh, I just like contrast better. There are people that are really low key and they like, and they like things of that nature, but I'm, I'm, I'm not. So. Let's put in the, I'm using a nice vi rich violet for the barn door. I still didn't get a small brush because uh, otherwise I'd be worried about all the little siding, the siding on the barn and I don't want to go there. I could, I'd be tempted. Okay, that door needs to be a little bit bigger. And you know what, this is where you start editing, that post just looks stupid right by the, uh, that's real technical, but <laughs> it looks really stupid right by this barn door. So it's coming out. And instead, once I get this painted in, I'll put some bushes in there. Yeah, it could be just a post that's missing. But this really, having that post there really screwed up the rhythm of that section. It's like a drummer that's just not, not getting it. Okay, that's much better. A more dragon drummer. Okay. Well, this barn's going to be red or have some red undertones just because I haven't had enough red in the painting for me. Uh, let's see. Underneath, this is like shadow here. This is shadow. I don't even know what that is. 
It's either, yeah, I think it needs to be a different color because that's confusing too. So that's going back to the green. This is where things that may look good in the photograph don't make sense in the painting, so off they go. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to be, I'm going to put an extra light roof on the, on the barn to start off with, and then I'll add, oh, I need some more white. I'll add to it later. Running out of room to mix. So in this show, what you've seen that's a lot different from some of the other shows is that I'm mixing a lot more directly on the palette rather than on the, rather than doing thin glazes on the canvas. Okay, so just a little bit of cad yellow deep. This is like a rusty, rusty tin roof. God, after a tornado there, the, the tin would just be in the trees like, like Christmas ornaments. It was, it was bizarre. After a bad tornado, it was about a month later, I was back in California. Okay. So I just mixed a really light, really light color for the roof, way lighter than it, than it needs to be. And then the, uh, the side of it's going to be more of a purpley red. Why am I doing that? I've got a warm, warm roof, and in order for it to have a shadow side, it's got to be cooler on the shadow side. That's a little too mauve and a little too pink. Oh, that's a nice neutral. Neutrals are great. They allow the brights to sing. You got to have resting places for the eyes, whether it's the rhythm of the painting or whether it's a color. It's like music, you, you know, you get auditory distress if you don't have that in music, and you get visual distress if you don't have that in the painting. This is too light. I can tell right now. <laughs> it's way too light. So I'm going to just grab some blue, grab a little more purple. A little more red. This is like a um, an 80s mauve, and that's not happy. So I'm adding some cad red light to it. I'm warming it up. I did have somebody email me, and they wanted me to do a painting that was that was with entirely cool pigments. And I may do that on the next show um, because that would be a real good challenge for me since I like to warm everything up. Um, he didn't think I could do it, so of course, you know, I, I got to give it a shot. Okay, now that's a little too bright, but I'm, I'm heading in the right direction. Let's try some of this iridescent paint just because it's fun. It may be fun, but it didn't work. Um, oh, maybe some ochre. Okay, so as you can see, it's not always scientific as far as what I'm putting down. Um, I, why am I not going with the color that's there? Well, the color that's there really isn't what I saw out there. And the color that's there is not going to have enough punch for, for what I want to do. So this is a good base. You know what? I'm just going to put the windows over the top. That's just taking too long. I grew up in the suburbs of San Jose, so I didn't know anything about country living. And we lived on we lived on uh, just a couple acres, but we were up in the Ozark Mountains, and we were surrounded by 80 acres where nobody lived. And the the lifestyle was was just very different than anything I'd ever done. And the people were so, <laughs> so patient. But when on my first day there, um, there was a gal in town, and I was 
driving in the car with her and there was a turtle crossing, tortoise crossing the road. She wanted me to pull over and grab that tortoise. <laughs> so you gotta be kidding. She said she was gonna make soup. <laughs> and I said, no, <laughs> I don't think so. I get my stuff at Safeway. You wanna make soup, you go get that turtle later, but there's no way I am gonna put that thing in my car. I'm not gonna eat him. I felt really, you know, it's like you can't eat him. And um, they just, you know, they'd laugh and call me a city girl, but I wasn't even that. I was a suburb girl. That's a whole different animal. And uh, they were so patient with me. Just a lot, I learned a lot from those people. Okay, I'm liking that. That's a better color. And now we just need a little distinction, and I can put on the roof. And actually, you usually frame something before you put the roof on, so th there was actually some logic in this. Okay. This is going to be way brighter than it would normally appear, and that's on purpose. So that's how I make things pop. Basically, I decide what color do I think it should, you know, what do I think it should be, and then I turn it up. Crank it up. It's like an equalizer. Yeah, that's good. It may not be bright enough, and I'll bet you later I go over and really brighten that up. I'm going to make this slightly, the, the light's not hitting it the same way, make it a little slightly darker, slightly redder. Not a huge contrast. Is there any shadow there? Not right there. So this kind of goes like this. I'm still trying to get my drawing down about right. And what happens to that little roof line? It just does something really weird. So I'm not sure whether I'll just kind of continue that or not. I may. I'll play with that later. Okay, so <clears throat> we got it about halfway blocked in. You can start to sort of tell what it is. The test is whether, whether the grandkids can tell. So they're real honest about what they see. Okay, so I need uh, need some separation here. Need a little shadow, so I'm just going to take a little bit of violet. The photographer who who does my paintings, he, I drive him nuts because when he's doing the photography, all my shadows have purple in there, and and it doesn't come out really. It, it, he has to really work it so that it comes out when he's taking the photographs, and. Uh, it's okay to put violet in the shadow. Oh, look at that red. That's gorgeous. Now, you know what? That's one of those strokes that you just like, and I need to leave that there, even though it's not what I intended to do. It's just a happy, that was a happy accent. Now, the temptation is to repeat that, but then it would lose all of being special, because everything would be there the same. Okay. I gotta do that, put that there. We've got the door. Let's see what's going up here. We've got a little thin little line here. Oops. <laughs> it happens. You can just repair that little little line. Throw in little trees over there. That was not on purpose, but you know what? There's always a way around that. Okay, there's light there. I'm gonna throw in a few more windows. I actually add some blue because I tend to forget that. Oh, that's nice and dark. Might be a little too much, but that's okay. I got something going on here. What does that angle do? It doesn't, it doesn't, it isn't as sharp as what I want to make it. I always think, what, what is the thing doing? It's really leaning. It looks like it's going to fall over. Um, and I'm not even going to fix that because there are a lot of barns out there that do that. That's not bugging me. Besides, I need to get the canvas covered before I go further. Okay. One thing I noticed in, in uh, Arkansas and other cooler climates is they don't do a lot of foundation planting. Um, but 
in a painting, it's essential because that's what's going to ground this puppy. So I'm going to put some dark hair. It actually needs to be angled up like that for that to make sense. Yeah. A little dark there. Add some green. Oh yeah, there's some there's some other things there that will anchor it. Okay, that's good. You need anchors. I'm gonna just take my brush and lift the strokes up here so it looks like there's some bushes. I'm breaking it up and pouncing on it. it needs to go further into that post that I put. Okay. That's like way too even, but I'll fix that with maybe some bright, some bright color. And how can I break that up? I can break it up by doing, having something come down here and lead up to it. That was nice. And maybe some lighter here that breaks that whole thing up. And I gotta stop playing with this and move forward. Okay, so there's a darker line about right here, so I'm gonna put some of that in. And I got, I'm tempted to, gotta keep moving. <laughs> it's hard. Okay, so what's gonna set this off? I need to get closer here. This needs to be darker. Um, so I'm gonna get that brush out and that's contaminated with just about every color known to man. Add some of the dark sap green. Warm it up just a little bit with this mixture here. And I'll put in this little scrub tree. What's this shape doing? Okay, so what I, what I started to do is exactly what I told you not to do, <laughs> that I always screw up. Started with the branches on the outside because I'm going at the perimeter and moving in. But really, um, I need to start at the base and move out. The edges, uh, they, they can be harder than they are, but I'll, I'll do that later. Right now, I just need to get the basic shape, but by starting in the middle and working out, there's actually going to be less paint on my brush, and I can apply less pressure, so there will be a normal little fanning thing going on here. Okay. And it needs to go up as high as the post. You can even cover some of that post up so that it's not so boring. And I'll put some more down here. Some of you may have noticed this red line down the center of the canvas. I have no idea how that happened. So it wasn't something that I did on purpose. Okay, there's this hair. Now, you can have one, again, it's a matter of rhythm. You can have one little bush thing here, but I think I'm gonna stick a little one here, and I'll go in threes, because odd numbers are more interesting than even, as far as balance. You've got, you've got, uh, and we can compensate. I, I could probably get away with it because I've got the four posts here by either putting another post here or breaking up this rhythm. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that. Again, I did the same thing. Was tempted to start on the outside and I had to push myself back in the middle. So, I mean, I can know how, somebody, somebody was tuning in and they, um, they were talking to me about the show and they said, well, I saw you screw up right away, so I turned the channel. And uh, I started laughing because uh, I am real honest about, about screwing up, but part of this is about, about the process and uh, making mistakes and going on anyway. And uh, you know, a good, way, a good way to be process oriented is, um, do you ever doodle in a shower on the shower door? You know, just make little marks. You know that whatever you're creating on that door is gone in, in seconds. The steam just takes, takes it away. So you're totally in the process of what you're doing. And you're not tied into the results. And I can truthfully say, 
that I have moments when I when I'm like that when I'm painting on something else, but that's about the only time where I don't care. So I understand what he meant about not wanting not wanting to see the mistake part, but um, that's what's good about this show is that it's it's live uh, to tape. So whatever happens happens, and you get a good sense of the painting process. All right, I need to really throw in some color fast because we're getting well into the show. And I'm going to do this with the same rhythm and oh, this nice muddy color. Hey, that's pretty cool. OK, I'll keep doing that. So that wasn't scientific. I was, <laughs> I was trying to cover the canvas quickly, and I liked what was happening. So I'm going to hold on to it. And also, one, one this, this was a nice. Um, you, you, you start going sideways and then throw a stroke up, throw a stroke up. Yeah, that is looking kind of beachy, huh? Um, let's not get too fussy with it. I like this white space here. I may just do something really light. Let's turn this into sand. <laughs> You know, at this point in the painting, I start off, I have a good idea of where I'm going with it. And sometimes through the whole process, I know exactly where I'm going with it. I've not known most, most, in most every stage, I keep changing my mind. And so I have no idea where this is going to end up. And that's kind of fun, too. Yeah, this is definitely a win. The wind's blowing. We're back to Thoroughgood. This has got some good energy. We're going to have to kind of anchor this with a little bit of darker color on the bottom, but not necessarily real dark. And it would be nice to tie in some orange and red. Woo. Yeah, that will be a challenge. Next, next time I'm going to try a painting that will be all cool colors. I won't even bring my red. Okay, that. I actually thought about trying a painting with a similar composition and really doing it before I came to the shoot so that I, it would be like a warm up painting, so that I'd really have it down before we started. And then I thought, nah. <laughs> Uh, the good thing about not doing that is that I would have a fresh energy. I wouldn't be doing anything that I'd done before. And it really has been a long time since I've done a landscape. And I'm having a blast. OK, so we've got a lot of energy going this way. Well, it's good to have throw some more stuff up in another area. Maybe shorten that bush a little. And uh, we've got. Uh, you, know, we th you think about the direction of the painting. You've got this stuff coming down on this. So this is like pushing down on this area. This is a nice solid flow back and forth to the barn area. Um, where there's a potential problem is some of the strokes here leading you off the canvas. So I need to push some of the direction um, back to, to another area so that it's not leading you totally off the canvas. I'm throwing just color and bits and pieces over the, uh, as it occurs to me. Uh, I wasn't explaining it over these posts. I need to throw in some strokes another direction. I'm picking up, obviously, picking up the canvas. And I'm pushing it this way, maybe. Stopping that, stopping that flow. So what, what would do that? Maybe some dark here, so it's another. Another place to look at. Yeah, that's good. I don't want a dead center, but 
It's always a tendency to make something really symmetrical. Oh, this was fun. So if you like to paint landscapes, I hope that you try doing maybe a portrait or a still life or an abstract. Something that's a little bit different or something you haven't done in a long time. Another good way to loosen up is if you only paint in oils, do, do a sculpture, paint in watercolor. Paint in the shower. Oh, that's happy. Okay, there's not enough red down below. I'll just have to add a little bit of that. Um, I could logically, you know, it's, it's, it's the, I'm torn between, lo you know, logical where it would go and then just kind of, you know, scribble and see what happens. Um, well, that scribble didn't work, so you put another one down. There was some nice violet. I think it has to have, to have that separation there, there's got to be that separation of dark and light. So I'm going to put in just little, I'm treating this as a, study. It may, you know, when we, we talk about this painting done next week, I may not touch it. I may do another one similar to this so you can see where it could go, but I may just leave it as it is. Now, if you have any questions about the palette that I've used today and we flash it up uh, for a little bit, you can always email me at shannon at shannongrissom.com and I'd be happy to send you a copy of the palette. And if you um, would like to try this painting at home, this would be a good one to try, I will send you a copy of the reference photo and you can give it a shot and paint along with the video. Okay, I think it needs a little bit of dark there. The last little thing before the show ends, just take the knife, put a little bit of light, a little bit of, if I can do this quickly, right on the post. Give that some, and no, I'm not being scientific. I'm just putting it down. Okay, so we, we did end up with five. And uh, so we've got a nice rhythm there. We were able to block in a, a landscape in a short amount of time. So I really hope that, that you give this a shot. Um, put the paint down. And most of all, do something that you're uncomfortable with, uh, something out of your comfort zone. And um, for me, it was the landscape. And give me, a, give me an email. Let me know how it worked out for you. Next time on Give Your Wall Some Soul, we will definitely be doing a cool painting. And that's just because somebody dared me and I got to give it a shot. So um, I don't know what I'll paint yet, but it will definitely be cool. Thanks for watching. <laughs>